Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here. First, thanks to all my new subscribers this week. I really appreciate it. And today I have a question for you. What is an exponential technology that is changing from becoming an enabling force for AI to a driving force of AI? We've talked about this technology before, and we've talked about what was an enabling, was and is an enabling technology, and we've talked about this new exponential technology and that it's converging with AI, but it really is going to become a driver of AI. Any guess what this is? Okay, well today it's an update on quantum computing. And quantum computing is a sea change in computing. So today's uh, update comes courtesy of Axios. And there are a couple articles that came out, one just a day ago and another a couple of months ago, a few months ago. But this is what these articles are saying. First of all, Honeywell has just released a new quantum computer. And um, one of the things this article says is that quantum computers made by different companies have different architectures, so they're not directly comparable. However, the closest thing to what would be comparable in traditional computing uh, is called quantum volume. And this is this computer has the biggest quantum volume of any invented yet at 128. So why is quantum computing going to become a driver of AI? Let's go back to classical computing, right? So AI cannot exist without computers. Why? Because it's an algorithm, it's software, and it has to have hardware to run on. And we've talked about relatively new technologies that have led to the huge explosion in AI, and that is one of the biggest ones is cloud computing. So uh, cloud computing allowed people to have massive computing power available instantly to them basically for the first time. This was unprecedented. You used to have to have your own computer and now you don't at all. In fact, why would you? with cloud computing. But uh, because quantum computers are still relatively rare, they uh, are still would still be owned or licensed. So in this case, Honeywell is going to have a subscription service to use this new quantum computer. So where is quantum computing at as a future driving technology converging with AI? So quantum computing is still really in its infancy, even though they've been working on it for a couple of decades. It took a very, very long time technically to get this thing to start to work. And what is the difference from classical computing? We'll talk about that again quickly. Classical computing uses bits, which are electrons in a one or a zero position. And this all happens on the chip. And so the ultimate um, power of traditional computing is inherently limited. Now that said, uh, I've talked to you before about Moore's Law, which was formulated by um, uh, Mr. Moore back in the 1960s, early 60s, and he basically said that uh, computing power would double roughly every 18 months. That has happened and continues to happen to this day. A stunning prediction. <laughs> uh, in two years, that prediction will be 60 years old and it's still happening. However, there is this practical limit to traditional computing. Um, Quantum computing does not have that limit. Why? Because quantum computing uses subatomic particles rather than atomic level particles. So atomic level particles are protons, neutrons, electrons. Subatomic 
particles are quarks, photons, and stuff like that. So uh, quantum computing has the potential to be exponentially more powerful than traditional computing. That, that's a massive statement. So that means that down the road, uh, our computing power could be exponentially higher than it is today. That's really, really an extraordinary statement. Um, so quantum computing has limitations. First of all, it has higher error rates that we've talked about, and that's due to what's called superposition. And superposition means that a quantum particle can be in multiple states at the same time, whereas an electron can only be in a zero or one position on a chip. Um, uh, uh, so superposition basically means the particle can be zero and one, or a state in between. Uh, there's another principle of quantum physics called entanglement, and this is where quantum computing gets its potentially exponential power from, because uh, entanglement means that uh, basically multiple particles can link together to achieve a result. Um, what is an example of this? <laughs> A simple example would be something like static electricity, where a discharge of static electricity in one place can affect something in a different place. Subatomic particles work the same, and we've talked about the fact that subatomic particles can be in any state, but their state is determined by the moment of observation. In other words, when a scientist looks at a subatomic particle, that defines its position for that instant, but then it changes. Um, so this is way more complex. Technically, uh, we're probably still a good 10 years away from a truly commercially viable computer. Honeywell would dispute that uh, because they're pitching their computer right now to large corporations. One of the ones that talked about using this new computer is Merck, right? Because you cannot model subatomic particles with a traditional computer. You can't do it. You can do it with a quantum computer. And in drug development, which we talked a lot about in terms of AI, with drug development, quantum computing opens up a whole new door to understand the building blocks of drugs in a way that was not possible before. By the way, another way of doing that is there's a lot of research going on right now about drug development in zero gravity on the International Space Station at the National Lab. And that is because uh, particles behave completely differently in the absence of gravity than they do on Earth. And that's why drug companies are using the weightless environment of the International Space Station for drug development. Quantum computing is another potential avenue of dramatically improving drugs. Um, I think it's reasonable to predict, and of course I could be wrong, this is just a personal prediction, but it's reasonable to predict that within our lifetimes, this is the next 30 plus years, uh, cancer is likely to be cured. Why? Because some of these new drug and modeling uh, abilities that are coming into play through cloud computing, quantum computing, and AI. So these are revolutionary technologies. They are complementary and converging, as we've talked about. And quantum computing is something that we here at the AI Guide are going to continue to monitor very closely because it's going to be a driving force in societal evolution going forward. Uh, that sounds like a big claim, but it's realistic. So thanks so much for watching. We're going to keep talking about quantum computing. You can certainly learn more by Googling it. Also, uh, for all of my viewers uh, who my channel is primarily pitched to, who are in high school, college, 
or in their 20s to mid 30s, if you're looking for something new to do or you haven't decided what you're going to do yet, quantum computing is a field that isn't going to be impacted by AI. It's going to be grown by AI. So this is a massive opportunity job wise. So thanks so much. I hope you like this segment. If you like it, please like it. If you really like it, please subscribe and share it. And thanks again to my subscribers and look for uh, things to accelerate here very shortly at the AI Guide. We have a number of new initiatives that are just starting and you're gonna see a lot of new activity over the next three months and then over the next year. And we're really excited about these plans. So keep an eye out and I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Bye.